Hey everybody and welcome into Clearing the Benches. Well, the NHL trading deadline is about 10 days away. So today and tomorrow, I'm going to give you one name off of every team that could potentially be traded on or before the March 8th trading deadline. But before we get to that, check out this awesome shirt that the nice ladies over at sunshinegirlsaz.com sent me today. I went out and checked my mail and bam, this was in there. It looks great, feels great, looks like it's gonna fit great. So check out our sponsors, sunshinegirlsaz.com. They've got shirts for girls, for guys, for kids, hockey sayings, funny sayings, a shirt for everybody, sunshinegirlsaz.com. So let's get right into it. NHL trading deadline is coming up real quick. And it looks like a lot of teams are going to try to hold out until the very end so that some of these guys that are on, you know, larger contracts, maybe expiring contracts, they're only going to have to pay, you know, the bare minimum. So, you know, you think about it, a guy who's making like $5 million a year, you know, even if you only sign him for six weeks, you know, that could be like upwards of like six, $700,000. So let's get right into it. We're going to start off in the Eastern Conference in the Atlantic Division. <clears throat> and the first team we have up on the board is the Boston Bruins. Now, when I looked at their lineup, they've got really, they're set right now. I just don't see them rocking the boat very much coming into the trading deadline. Uh, if they do anything, you know, they've got some UFAs on there. Jake DeBrus, Kevin Shattenkirk. Uh, I could see those guys getting moved, especially if neither has plans of, you know, re-signing there or if the Bruins don't have plans on signing them again. So uh, Jake DeBrusque, Kevin Shattenkirk, and if I was a gambling man, I would say it's probably going to be DeBrusque. Um, he's more of a playoff type player, I feel like. You know, he's a gritty guy. He's going to score. He's going to play you know, could play third or fourth line minutes for you. So if I would go out on a limb, I would say that it's going to be Jake DeBrusque that gets moved on from the Boston Bruins. Next up, we've got the Florida Panthers. Now, I'm looking at their lineup. Again, same situation as the Bruins. They are rolling right now. They don't really want to rock the boat. You know, they almost won the cup last year. And it looks like they're about to make another strong run. I don't see anything, you know, that tells me otherwise. And again, you got Matthew Kachuk leading the way. You know, that guy's going to tell you, get on his back. He's taking you in. When I looked at their <clears throat> lineup, you know, there was only a couple of guys that I saw that were UFAs. And everybody else, they pretty much have locked up. And it looks like, you know, the, the young kids, these are all kids that they want to hold on to. So I don't see them trading away any of their young prospects. Um, so the two names that I come up with are the hated Nick Cousins. Now, he's 30 years old. He's a UFA. You know, his name was all over the place earlier this year with the Jason Zucker incident. Uh, you know, the big hit he had from behind on Valimaki, and then Zucker came in and hit him from behind. They had the big fight afterward, and then after, in the next game down in Florida, they started the game with two fights in the first, like, eight seconds, I think it was. Um, Nick Cousins, if anybody would take him, you know, and the guy's still a good hockey player. He's just got to get his head straight, and there's been a million guys like that before that have figured it out, so... Um, Nick Cousins, even though he's got some big time baggage coming with him, he could be a team that would really help, you know, a playoff team. He's, he's a grinding guy and obviously gets on everyone's nerves. And that's a big thing in the playoffs. Marshawn made a living off doing that for a long time. The other name I see on the Florida Panthers, that I think that they, you know, could probably get some interest in <clears throat> Ryan Lomberg. Um, you know, he's another guy. He's not afraid to mix it up, get in the middle of it. Um, you know, he's a UFA at the end of the year. I don't know if I were Florida, you know, I think he's fit in well with their team and their chemistry, but you know, you look at him and you say, is this a guy that we want to sign for like another five years? And at this point, I don't think the Panthers want to do that. So Ryan Lomberg, I think, would be the guy that would get moved out. I think he would be good on, you know, a playoff team. 
And again, that's if Florida wants to rock the boat at all. Maybe they look at a guy like Lomberg and say they want to keep him for this playoff run because he adds value, and then they'll just let him walk in free agency. Um, you know, I could see that happening as well. So I'm going to say for the purposes of this, Ryan Lomberg is going to be the guy that gets moved out of Florida. Next up, Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, there's two big names that jump off the page when you look at, you know, their lineup. The two guys they bought in this year, I don't know why they had such high hopes. You know, it was like when they bought in Ryan Reeves, for some reason it was like they thought they were bringing in, you know, a, a big 50-goal scorer. The next two guys on our list are Max Domi and Bertuzzi. Tyler Bertuzzi had a big couple of years in Detroit. He scored, I think, 30 goals one year. He was becoming a sniper. If I were him, I would have never left Detroit. If they would have let him keep playing with Larkin, I would have just stayed right where he was. But he didn't. Um, Domi, another one. I know Domi's been playing better as of late. You know, he is a guy that in the playoffs, you know, he can be an agitator. He can get into the other team's skin. He could also score some goals. Um, he's a smaller guy, so I think, you know, the further into the playoffs you go, the less of him you might see ice time-wise. Um, but if I had to pick out of these two guys, and they're both UFAs, and considering the amount of noise that they made coming in this year, I would think Toronto would try to get something. And I think a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi, he scored 30 goals a couple of years ago, I think another team that's on these lists of, you know, playoff caliber teams that would try to move in, you know, maybe Tampa Bay would want them. Heck, maybe the Rangers would want them. Uh, there's some teams out there that I could definitely say Bertuzzi could add some value in the playoffs. So I'm going to say for the purpose of this, Tyler Bertuzzi is going to be the guy that gets moved out of Toronto. And also, too, you know, they got some other big names out there in Toronto. That Tavares deal is just hanging around their neck at like, what is it, like 10 or $11 million? It is huge. And, you know, talk about blockbuster deals. Maybe, you know, somebody wants Tavares and they would be willing to pay the price tag for it. Uh, next up, we've got the Detroit Red Wings. Now, we know earlier this year, Detroit made a big splash with Patrick Kane. And, you know, at the time, I personally thought that Kane had picked a team too early. I wasn't really questioning whether Kane was going to be able to produce or not, but I was really wondering if Kane may have waited a little bit longer to take, to pick a team that, I don't know, maybe had more secure playoff outlook you know maybe not a team on the wild card thing that could possibly if they go on a five game losing streak they could possibly miss the playoffs um so as far as patrick kane i see he's really lighting it up especially as of late that goal he scored yesterday was another patrick kane goal it was just another one for his all-time highlight reel um but when i look at the red wings right now i see two guys on this list, and um, one of them has moved around, I think, like three or four teams, and you know, just since the trading deadline. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's been three teams. Shane Gostisbehere on the Red Wings, um, you know, Arizona to Carolina, now to Detroit. Um, you know, when the Flyers paid Arizona to take Gostisbehere off of their hands, like, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago. Uh, Goss Despair was not a highly sought after player in the NHL at all. Uh, I know a lot of people out here in Arizona, I think overvalued him, you know, in his time here in Arizona, I see him kind of makes the same mistakes he seems to make all the time. He made it that mistake yesterday. He seems to, for some reason, have trouble coming out of the defensive zone. Sometimes he overskates the puck and he did that yesterday or fanned on it. And the guy walked right in and had like a grade A scoring chance. Um, I know he can work on your power play and maybe in the playoffs, you know, some team is looking for a little power play boost. Um, 
Like Shane Goss is fair is a possibility, but the name that I do think will be moved, and I know he's played better this year. He's played better as of late. So some people may look at me and think, oh, no, man, this guy's going to stay here. He's a Red Wing now. Michael Rasmussen, $3.2 million through 27 28 That is a hefty price tag to pay for the next, like, five years, four years. Is this guy really worth it? Now, I could see a team like Edmonton. They like big guys. You know, last year they traded for Nick Bukestad. Uh, you know, they bought in a Vander Kane a couple of years ago. I could see them, you know, taking a chance on a guy like Rasmus and thinking maybe if you get him out there with some serious talent that the guy could go to the front of the net, he could be like a huge net front presence, you know, a Chris Kreider type, a guy that like you could put out there. and Maybe he gets hot for you in the playoffs and maybe, you know, you guys go on a cup run. But um, Michael Rasmussen would be a guy that I could definitely be the guy that gets moved out of Detroit. Uh, next up, we've got the Tampa Bay Lightning. And as far as the Lightning goes, um, you know, last year, or two, was it last year, two years ago, they bought in Tanner Genot, and they're paying him $2.6 million through next year. Um, I personally love Tanner Genot. I know it didn't work out for him down in Tampa Bay. I know they gave up, you know, a high volume of picks for him uh, to Nashville when they bought him in. And, you know, I really think that they thought he was going to turn the corner and, you know, go from just a, a grit guy to maybe like a grit guy who can score 25, 30 goals for you. Um, you know, and then if, you know, any rough stuff breaks out, you know he's going to be the first guy into the fray. Uh, does not seem like it's working out, but I could see if he's healthy and Tampa wanted to move on from him, I could see a number of teams that are going to be going into the playoffs that would probably um, give Tampa a call and kick the tires on Tanner Janot. Uh The other guy on the list, and I would think that this one would probably be the guy that would move out of Tampa Bay, Tyler Mott. Uh, he's only 28 years old. He's a UFA. Uh, a couple of years ago, you know, the Rangers – Bought him in, and he really did well uh, with Andrew Kopp down the stretch. And I think the guy is definitely a playoff player. Um, he plays very well defensively. You know, I don't see him being the type of guy that you're going to put him out there and worry that the other team is going to, you know, light them up. He's good on the offense as well, a guy, you know, he's a little busy bee around the net. He's not afraid to get into the dirty areas. And again, he's only 28 years old and he's a UFA. So you probably wouldn't have to give up more than maybe like a fifth round draft pick for him. But I could definitely see Tyler Mott being a team, being a guy that a team calls and says, you know, fifth round, why not? And they try to bring him in. So as far as the Tampa Bay Lightning go, I'm going to say that Tyler Mott is going to be the guy that would go on to another team. Now you got the Buffalo Sabres. Huge disappointing year. You know, everyone thought they were going to make the playoffs after last year. And then TNT just never really got it going this year. And a lot of their guys on that team just have not. And when you look at cap friendly and you see some of the numbers that they're paying these guys it's surprising you see Jeff Skinner is way up there bringing in some serious bucks and considering the output that they get from him I think that scale is a little bit uh off centered so when I look at the Sabres again you know you want teams that are in the playoffs they just need a guy for the most part, if you're in a you know situation like the New York Rangers, this is Stanley Cup or bust. And you only need a guy to get hot for six weeks. You don't need the guy to you know go on and have like a 10-year career for you. A lot of times they don't care what you do. You get hot for them in six weeks, and you know, you either win them a cup or take them to a cup, you know. 
That's a way that you could get re-signed, extended, you know, whatever the situation would be. And nobody turns down offense coming into the playoffs. So when I look at this lineup, okay, the two guys that come out, three guys actually that pop off on here, you know, you got Casey Middlestat. He's a center left wing. Uh, he's only 25 years old. I think since the day the kid got drafted, his name's been on the trading block. Um, now, 10 years older than him, you've got Kyle Ocposo. He's a walkaway free agent at the end of this year. Now, that is a guy I would think that a lot of teams would be calling about. I could see a team like the Bruins. They like, you know, heavier guys who can play down low. Ocposo is an around-the-net player. So, I could see, uh, you know, even if they could get him on the cheap, a team like Edmonton kicking the tires on him. Uh you know, even some of these other teams that are trying to make the playoffs, you know, I could see if they needed it, you know, a team like Carolina wants to get a little bit beefier up front. I could see them kicking the tires on Kyle Ocposo. Again, he's a walk away free agent at the end of the year. So it's not like, you know, you're hitched to the guy for life. And Victor Olofsson, 28 years old. You know, this guy a couple of years ago was a sniper. He was one of those you know, he, he got at the face-off circle like Ovechkin's office. And this guy could really snipe it. And he was starting to become a power play sniper. But at the same time, you know, again, you don't turn down goals. And Buffalo was having a hard time scoring goals. And he kind of just popped up on the scene. And he was doing well there for a while. But I haven't really seen his name pop in much lately. Kid's only 28 years old. Maybe a change of scenery does the guy good. You know, I'm not going to say that Buffalo doesn't have some high-end talent, but for some reason, it's just not working out. Some of those draft picks, it's like the guys that they drafted, it seems like they when they got drafted, they were like almost at their ceiling already. And then, you know, two years in, that's what you're getting for the rest of the guy's career. Uh, Victor Olofsson, you know, again, you get some of these high-flying teams, the LA Kings, you know, I'm sure that Rob Blake and Luke Robitaille would kick the tires on that deal. You know, if they could get him on the cheap, maybe they could get him for, you know, a third rounder. Um, I could see the Kings being a team, but definitely as far as the Sabres go, I could see Victor Olofsson being the guy who's on his way out of that team. So next up, we've got the Ottawa Senators. Okay. Now, when I look at Ottawa... You know, to me, they're probably the biggest dumpster fire of the NHL this season. Everything that could go wrong for them went wrong for them. Management, players, it just, you know, guys that they traded for. You know, they had high hopes for Jacob Chikrin. And, you know, here, a year later, they're already talking about possibly trading him out. So... When I look at the Ottawa Senators, there are quite a few names. You know, Vladimir Tarasenko is on an expiring contract, so you know he's getting moved somewhere. And the other name that I see, you know, he missed half the season with the gambling incident is Shane Pinto. You know, if you've watched the guy since he's come back, he would help any playoff team. He's always around the net. He's always, you know, getting involved. He's in the dirty, greasy areas. So I could see a guy like Shane Pinto... Um, you know, getting moved on. But in terms of, you know, Ottawa, this is an easy one for me. It's going to be Tarasenko is going to be the obvious guy who gets moved out. You know, he has probably a couple of names on his list that he's saying, you know what, I'm not going there. They're not going to win the cup. But again, you know, I see teams that are really close and they just need to get over the hump. LA Kings, Edmonton Oilers, Tarasenko, you know, bona fide playoff performer. Both of those teams are pretty close to a cup. So I could see Vladimir Tarasenko definitely being the guy that gets moved out of Ottawa. And then last up that we've got in the Atlantic Division, the Montreal Canadiens. And to me, this is a no-brainer. And I feel like this is going to be uh, the team that trades for this guy is telling everybody we are very serious about making a cup run. Jake Allen. Uh, you know how many goaltenders are just playing below average this year. A lot of them are. And when you look at a lot of these big-name teams, you know, a lot of them are getting sunk by their, you know, 
goaltending. You look at the Devils. Uh, you look at Detroit. You know, those are two teams that had big-time high expectations. Buffalo, Devin Levi hasn't worked out this year like they had hoped it would be. So Jake Allen is the guy that I'm calling a no-brainer on this one. He's going to be the guy getting moved out of Montreal. I think uh, a very Stanley Cup serious team is going to call and make that acquisition. Now, let's get over to the Metro Division. And right here, New York Rangers are in first place. I know they're just lost last night to Columbus to end their big 10 or 11 game winning streak, whatever it was. Uh, they've got a couple of guys on this team that are just underperforming or are not worth the value. Uh, and two guys that come to name, everyone knows Capo Caco, but also Barkley Goudreau. Barkley Goudreau is currently playing on the fourth line, you know, with the two big stories of the NHL right now, Adam Enstrom and Matthew Rempe. You know, Rempe got in another fight last night with Columbus. It's like, you know, the kid can't go through warmups without there being a line of guys asking him if he wants to fight him during the game. Um, Goudreau's playing center between that. Now, to me, Goudreau's got the pedigree. He won the Cups down in Tampa Bay. Uh, they signed him to a lot of money, and they had given him term when they signed him. And I personally think he's like one of the best guys that you could put between these two. He is a first guy into the fight type of guy. So Barkley Goudreau is going to lead by example. And, you know, when he goes in to fight a bigger guy, Goudreau's not doing it now just because he's got two six eight guys standing behind him. Goudreau did it anyway. Before that, he, you know, you go on YouTube and pull up some Barkley Goudreau fights. He fought a lot of big name guys and he's done well. I always think that whoever has the best balance is usually the guy that's going to win the fight. And Barkley Goudreau has got some serious balance to him. And when he gets in a fight, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's also got playoff pedigree, you know. But he's got a big contract to him. So out of these two names, you know, seeing which team, which guys are going to get moved, I think it's going to be Capo Caco um, for the New York Rangers. I think after the time that they've had with them, I think they've seen all that they want to see. I know the fan base is kind of tired of them. Uh, you know, second overall pick, look at the distance between him and Jack Hughes, the first pick. It's like there's no comparison. Um, so I think Capo Caco, and to be honest with you, I think for him personally, I think he's one of those shy kids. I would think he would be best off in a market that maybe he's not like a hockey starved, hockey crazed, uh, environment, you know, out here in Arizona, they've got like three beat writers. They don't get asked very tough questions after a loss. I could see Capo Caco fitting in well with some of the guys that they've got out here and maybe a change of scenery and the guy turns into a 25 goal scorer every year but for me on this list Capo Caco is going to be the guy getting moved out of New York next guy that next team we have up is the Carolina Hurricanes uh, I saw two guys on this list both of them are walk away free agents Tebu Teravining 29 years old um I think this guy could definitely add value to a playoff team. You know, some of these teams that are high skill and high motor, you know, I keep going back to like the LA Kings, um, the Edmonton Oilers, teams that just up and down and, you know, they can skate with you up and down. You know, I look, the Oilers and the Kings play each other a lot. And when you see those games, a lot of times those teams are mirroring each other. Um, so I could see a guy like Tara Vinen, you know, getting moved out West. I could see, uh, him on a team, you know, I know Edmonton just made the move with Monaghan, but I think that would have been a good fit for him. And then another guy here, he's also a walk away free agent at the end of the year. And he's 31 years old is Jordan Martinook. Now Martinook, uh, plays an important role on that team. You know, anybody that watches, you know, fourth line guys, you know, look at the line they had out in Long Island, you know, with uh, Sezekis, Martin, and Clutterbuck. I mean, that was almost a shutdown line. They could put you out there against some other team's first line. And not only would your first line, you know, probably not score, they were probably going to get banged up while they were out there because that team especially those three guys, they like to lay the body. Uh, 
Jordan Martinook, he's built for the playoffs. You know, the guy, he knows how to score. It's not like he's a big scorer, and it's not like you would have him out there. But you could definitely put him out there against first-line talent, and you wouldn't have to worry that, you know, he's going to give up three goals in one shift. I That's not his style. Guy's 31 years old. He brings grit. I am sure he would help any team that's just looking for a little stability down in your third or fourth line. I think Jordan Martin, and in looking at him or Tara Vinen, you know, that's a toy cost. Both guys are um, free agents at the end of the year, walk away. And it's just a matter of, you know, do you think you're going to be able to sign Tara Vinen? Because he's going to want to sign a long-term deal. Um, and what would Carolina be willing to get back for these guys. I think Tara Vinen, you're going to be playing, paying a much higher price tag than you would for Martinook. I could see Martinook, you could probably get for a third rounder. So for purposes of this, I'm going to say that Jordan Martinook is going to be the guy that would leave the Carolina Hurricanes. Next up, the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, they're in a little bit of a roller coaster right now as well. Um, you know, they've got the back end situation with Walker and Sealer, and now I'm hearing that Scott Lawton's name is coming up. I looked at his numbers this year, big time disappointing. Uh, I think just in general, he's just kind of, I don't want to say worn out as welcome in Philly, but I think, you know, he's probably saying I've done as much as I can do here. And the Flyers are probably saying the same thing. Um, I don't really know how many teams would be like clamoring for Scott Lawton at this point. So I'm going to go out on a limb and I am going to say that if the Flyers decide to be sellers at the deadline, I'm going to say it's going to be Sean Walker that's going to be moving on. I think uh, he's got enough skill. Just his overall play does what I would say would do well in the playoffs. So, you know, a team that's looking for a little bit of back-end help and, you know, just kind of secure things up. Based on the season that he had this year, if he would continue playing like that through the playoff run and then, you know, into the playoffs, I could see Walker being a big-time addition to a team. So I'm going to go out on a limb, and we're going to say that Walker is going to be the guy that would be heading out of Philly. And again, that's only if Philly's out of the playoff race or they don't think that they would go very far. Maybe they think they would get better value, you know, um, either with a prospect or a draft pick than they would, you know, out of Walker in the future. Next up, very disappointed again this year, New Jersey Devils. Um, you know, they had a high hopes. Um, you know, they signed Timo Meyer to that huge deal. And right now that deal is not looking so good. Um, they just, for some reason, the guys on that team that are a little bit older, they're starting to play like they're older. Um, you know, they miss Dougie Hamilton a lot this year. Um, you know, I don't think Dougie Hamilton personally was a guy that's going to lead them through a playoff run, but he's definitely, you know, an offensive guy and, you know, he's a bigger body. So that helps you a little bit in the playoffs. But um, as far as the New Jersey Devils go, when I look at their lineup and I would see who would other teams be calling for? Who would other teams be interested in? There's a guy here on this list. Everybody knows his name from earlier this year. He broke Connor Bedard's jaw. Brendan Smith. And I am just going to go ahead and put Smith's name down on the list as the guy that would be leaving Jersey. And I say that because Brendan Smith does exactly what you need in the playoffs. You can play him on defense. You can play him on the wing. You can play him on the penalty kill. If you need him to drop the gloves, he is more than willing to drop the gloves. Remember, when he was in the Rangers, he had to fight Tom Wilson a couple of times. So um, Brendan Smith is, I think, the biggest name on the Jersey Devils that other teams would be calling about just because of, you know, the Swiss Army knife factor. You can play him in so many different positions. Um, I personally don't think he would be a big-time liability defensively in the playoffs, even if you played him on defense. I could see them more, a team that's looking for a little bit more grit up front. 
you know, maybe a net front presence. He's definitely not afraid to stand in front of the net and take whatever beating. So for the Jersey Devils, we're going to say Brendan Smith. And then next up on the list, we've got the Washington Capitals. Now, I did a video recently, and it was saying about the possibility that Alexander Ovechkin could get traded. It's not, you know, 100% out of the realm. Other bigger names in the world of sports have been moved on. So that is not the guy on my list today. Today on my list, I got two other guys, three guys, actually. Um, I know one of them is an RFA but for some reason, uh, for the draft pick, I think he was about 15th in the first round. But Connor McMichael, to me, I see him just making the same kind of bonehead mistakes in the defensive zone just all too often. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe a change of scenery would be good for him. I look at Washington moving forward, and I think they are about to hit some rough, rough waters in the next two to three years. Uh, the next guy up on the list here is Mantha. Huge body. You know, when the Red Wings drafted him, you know, they were thinking he was going to be a, you know, a Keith Kachuk type. You know, a guy was going to go to the front of the net. He was going to score ugly goals. And if need be, he would fight your biggest guy. And um, for some reason, Mantha just, I don't know. He seems like he's a little soft. I know he's a streaky goal scorer, and I know he's a big body, and I know he is willing to drop the gloves. Um, but as far as, you know, being a guy you want to hold on to, you know, they're paying him $5.7 million. Yeah, he's a walkaway free agent, but, you know, you still have to pay the guy close to a million dollars for like a six-week run. Uh, the other guy on this list, and this is the guy that I'm going to just say now, I think this is going to be the guy that everyone's going to be calling about, and I think he will be the guy that gets moved off of the Washington Capitals, and that is Darcy Kemper. Like I said earlier, there's too many teams that are highly invested, and they are just shaky when it comes to goaltending. Uh, Kemper. You know, just won a couple, a couple of years ago. I could see a number of teams calling about him. I could see Edmonton calling, the Kings calling, Colorado calling. On the East, I could see a team like Florida calling. Toronto for sure would be calling. Detroit should be calling if they're going to be all in. Uh, I think Darcy Kemper could be a guy that would win your team the cup. You know, he just did it a couple of years ago, so there's no reason he couldn't do it again. Uh, I think he's just kind of got that mentality. He's just a steady Eddie type of guy. He doesn't get too high or low. So as far as the caps, Darcy Kemper is going to be the guy that I see moving out of there. Next up, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Another big disappointment. When they bought in Carlson, you know, they really, they didn't really pay that big of a price to, you know, trade for him. But boy, that contract is just a whale. And I look at, you know, Latang. Malkin seems like the only name that you ever hear coming out of there for good reasons is Crosby's name. You know, the rest of the guys, and now you got the Gunsel thing. You're talking, you're 10 days away from the trading deadline. And like, you know, you don't even know whether Jake Gensel wants to stay or if he wants to leave. Uh, again, on the video that I did about Ovechkin possibly moving on, I also said, you know, wouldn't be out of the realm if Crosby moved on. And I said he would, you know, Probably be a good fit down in a team like Tampa. And again, you know, for football fans, Tampa Bay was good enough for Tom Brady, and it worked out pretty good for him down there. You don't think Sidney Crosby going down there, stepping into a lineup with Stamco, Sorelli, Point, Hedman, I mean, Kucherov? Come on, that would be some serious firepower. So if that were to happen, it wouldn't shock me. But, um, I don't think they're going to re-sign him, and I think they're going to move on from Jake Gensel. So for this, we're going to say Gensel is going to be the guy that moves out of Pittsburgh. Uh, next up, we've got the New York Islanders. You know, when they bought in Patrick Waugh, I think everyone thought, you know, if they're going to turn the corner, this is when it's going to happen. And again, for some reason, just doesn't seem like it happened. Uh, you know, they had an, a little pop. They won their first game, and then they lost like three straight. And ever since then, it's just kind of been hit or miss. So 
Uh, as far as the Islanders, they've got two guys on this team that any playoff team would love to have on their fourth line. And that is Cal Clutterbuck or Matt Martin. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to put down both of these guys because I think they both could get moved. Um, and, you know, maybe they both want to retire Islanders and maybe they both say, you know, I, I've had enough. Both of them have played a long time. Matt Martin's been in a lot of fights. Cal Clutterbuck has a lot of hits on that body and he's not the biggest guy. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to say that it's either going to be Clutterbuck or Martin that get moved out of the island. And last up on our list, we've got the Columbus Blue Jackets. And there are three guys on this list. You know, the big name that everybody knows is Patrick Laine. Uh, I don't know that too many teams are going to be calling about him. Uh, I think just until he gets his mental wherewithal figured out and, you know, he shows some team for at least a full season that he's all in. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be calling about Patrick Lyonet, but his name is circulating out there in the trade rumor mills. Um, the other two guys that I have on here, um, you know, a team could call about Ivan Provorov. He's making $4.7 million through 24-25, but I could see a team calling about him that needs a little back-end help, maybe wants some help on the power play. Uh, the other guy that I've got on this list here is Jack Roslovic. And Roslovic, when he got traded with Line A from Winnipeg, he was coming back home. He was born in Columbus. I thought, oh, this guy's going to take off. The way he played, I thought for sure he would be a 25 goal scorer every year. Uh, he's got some decent numbers, you know, for the amount of time that he gets to play. Um, but I think, you know, he's a walk away free agent. I could see a team kicking the tires on him. You know, you, I personally don't think you'd have to give up more than like a fifth or a sixth rounder. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to say that a team is going to go out on a limb and they're going to take a chance on Provorov. And Provorov's going to be the guy leaving Columbus. All righty, next up, we're going to get to the next segment. And we'll do this pretty quick. I know we're running a little long on time. But the Macklin Celebrini sweepstakes, and we are up to the Calgary Flames. And when I was looking at the Flames lineup, you know, they do have some guys on that team that I, you know, would say if somehow Calgary moved up uh, and, you know, either won the lottery or traded into the first pick, you know, uh, a guy like Connor Zary, that kid is really lights out. He plays an all around game, he knows how to score. Um, I think he would be a good guy to have Celebrini playing a line with. And Kadri this year, you know, I don't think too many people saw it, but Kadri's, you know, having a little bit of a bounce back here. Huberto, you know, the skills there, it's just a matter of if he can get it figured out up top. Uh, you know, you got other two guys here that are highly skilled. You got Sharon Govich and Mangiapani. Both of these kids can score. Both of these guys are only like 25, 26 years old. So, you know, you would get some time out of them if you put them with Celebrini. So as far as for the Celebrini sweepstakes in Calgary, those are the teams that, uh, those are the names rather that I think he would get some time with. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. But uh, Eastern Conference is done. Let me know what you think. Let me know, you know, who do you think off of these teams would possibly get moved. And if you could, please always hit the like and subscribe button. And as we always do here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.